from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Blind Bartimaeus receives his sight. Then they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples, together with the large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he is calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. We look up uh, on the various ministry of activities of Jesus Christ while he was in this world. And uh, one of the ministries that he was doing here was healing people in uh, their physical healing as well as the spiritual healing. And many people were healed from many diseases. And uh, one of them, all, like all of you know, that was he healed a lot of blind people. And one of them was a person by name Bertimai, who is listed here as the son of Timae. And uh, this passage is about a person who was begging on the street side in Jerusalem, uh, the streets of Jerusalem, uh, because he was blind and he didn't have a way of living, so he started begging. And in those times, begging was not considered um, a bad thing, especially in the, around the temple of Jerusalem, because people were uh, asked to give alms before they go into the temple to pray, to give donations, charity. So they get an opportunity to give to somebody, so that somebody has to be there yeah. <laughs> begging for money. So it was not um, considered to be that. It's a lot of beggars around the temple at that time also. And, and Bhattimai was one of them. And uh, he was there on a regular day. He didn't expect anything miraculous or special probably to happen in his life. Uh, like any other morning, he probably was woken up from the street where he was lying and sleeping by the noise of the people who were going to work or the, the animals who were, they were trying to take to the farms or things like that. He woke up and probably started his uh, regular work as begging to set up his begging ministry there. But whatever was he, he was doing, he was a blind man and things were not going good for him. And also, uh, not only he was a blind man, but also he didn't have anybody to care for him. And uh, so he was by himself on the streets and uh, begging for others' help. And Jesus and the disciples and probably a large crowd was walking by at that time. And he probably heard this commotion and asked people around, what is that commotion, that noise that I hear? And they told him a prophet by name, Jesus is coming by. So immediately he stood up and he started calling and yelling. And he started calling like this. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. How many times have you heard you call by your name and then saying that you are son of somebody? Have you ever been addressed like that? <laughs> so this person who was blind heard about Jesus. Somehow he had the vision or the knowledge in his heart that the one who is coming by the name of Jesus is the son of David. And he did not call him by the name of son of Joseph because that is what he was the son of Joseph in his community. His father was no Joseph. But he called him by the name of David, his great, great, great grandfather. So this man who was blind according to the world, who could not see physically, had a vision that many others did not have at that time. So it is not about having eyes to see. 
if you can you have can I have eyes but you cannot see how many times like I do that you work on something and then all of a sudden you you can find the screwdriver or the tool that you were working with and you will look around everywhere and it was in my hand about few minutes ago now I can find it now who do I what do I do I start calling for somebody to help me usually my wife and she would come by and, and look around it right in front of there in the floor. Can't you see? <laughs> and she would give it to me. And it has happened so many times. I'm sure many of you have happened like that in your lives. Even though our eyes were open and the thing was right in front of you, you could not see what was happening. But this blind man, even though he could not see the people around or the things that are happening around physically, he knew that Jesus was the son of David who came as the root of Jesse the deliverer of this world that he can do something about his situation so he called out to him and said hey son of David have mercy on me and Jesus stopped and called him and asked the people to call him so they called him the blind man and then Jesus said cheer up get on your feet and, and they said Jesus is calling you Throwing his uh, clothes aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. And Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. So it's an interesting question and an interesting answer. Jesus was asking this blind man who was sitting begging for money on the street, what do you want me to do for you? It is not because Jesus did not know. He knew that his need was to be healed from his blindness and he wanted to see. But he was asking him to understand, to, to acknowledge his need. A lot of times we think that we can see or we think that we are not blind. Only the acknowledgement of our condition can reveal our situation before God. That is for acknowledging ourselves before God. Do you really know what your need is? If you don't know what your need is, then you are not going to be healed from the things that you need to be healed from. So our need is to be uh, relieved from our pain and our suffering, particularly our sin that binds us every day. That is what God is asking us. Do you know exactly what is your need in your life? Many times come physical needs. We want more money. We want more, you know, more things that we can enjoy. New house, new car, you know, peace and joy. These are all good things that we can desire for. There's nothing wrong with it. But at the same time, the bottom need that we all have is to acknowledge our condition before God. That more than all these things, we need you in our lives. Because when you are in our lives, we will be more than happy than anything else that can give happiness. Money cannot buy you happiness. People cannot bring you happiness. They can give you some company sometimes and after a while it wears off. And then we think about many other things. Money in the bank. I mean how many billionaires are miserable. We know that. So we, I don't have to tell you all of that things. But God is the only one who can fill our hearts in that void that we are yearning for. That, that can fill us to that happiness. That is what Jesus was asking, what exactly do you need from me? And he said, Rabbi, I want to see. And Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So God's provisions are there for us to receive. If provided we have, we are, we are, we have the, the ability to acknowledge our need before God. And uh, Bartimai, as we told, uh, as we are told, his name was Bartimai. He didn't even have a name. The name Bartimai means son of Timai. That's what we read there. So many people say that it was not really his name. He was known by his father's name. So Bartimai is the son of Timai. Some Bartimai thought that there is going to be something that he can receive from Jesus, as long as he acknowledged his need. Before Jesus, Jesus was able to heal him. Um, there were different types of reactions that we hear there. There are 
Bhaktimai was there with his need before Jesus and Jesus was there with his compassion and grace to bless him and then there are people around them who did not even pay attention to this guy until he started calling out and others with opportunity to guide him to Jesus. So there are several different people and characters in this story that we see. Uh, understanding our need is the beginning of healing and acknowledging our situation and our condition. We must confess that we do not have all the answers. But we can be rest assured that God knows all the answers even beyond that we can see. God knows everything. We are, we are blind to many things around us. We are blind about tomorrow. We don't know what is happening tomorrow. We are blind about the next moment. As much as we are in this technology advanced world, we know that we are blind to many things. But God can see through everything in us and through us. He could see that Jesus is coming to help and he can help him and he acknowledged that. He didn't allow any negativism or his painful or suffering situations or even the crowds to deter him. He called out to Jesus knowing that he can help him. He called Jesus by, by David's name and knew that uh, he could heal and give solution to his problems. And um, also we read that the blindness that he had was physical but he had vision inside. He had a great sight internally that he could see that Jesus was the son of God, son of David. So he could receive that healing. During this Lent time, as we, as people of God, as we come before God together and also rededicate our lives together, Pray that God will open our hearts and minds to see the things that are hidden. There are many things that are hidden that we need to see. God will open our eyes to see ourselves. One of the teaching classes, uh, a professor asked a question, who would you like to see and talk to one day if you have the ability to do so? And many people talked about their ancestors who have died and many people said they wanted to see Moses and talk to David and people like that in the Bible. But one answer was very uh, poignant and very important that they, he heard was that I want to see and talk to myself. That is exactly what we need to do during this time of Lent. To see ourselves as we are and to know what is needed in our lives that Jesus can do. There might be hatred or there might be bias or there might be injustice. Things like that that are binding us in our hearts. Open our hearts to God during this time that God can heal us. Jesus can cleanse us because he's just walking by. Even though he's walking by, he knows you by name. And he knows what is needed in our lives to clean us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we can be healed from not only our physical infirmities and sicknesses but also our inside that he can cleanse us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world and he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. And that is what God is going to give us today as we go from this place. Be the light of the world and see the things as God sees it, not as we see it. And have the grace to see others in need and help them. May the good Lord bless us with this word. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind. Yeah.